In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the enthalpy of solution for solid sodium chloride. Now, before we work on that problem, we need to understand the process by which sodium chloride dissolves in water and all of the energy changes that occur with it as well. So first, we're starting with solid sodium chloride. In this structure, all of the ions are very close to each other. So it's in a solid state but it's composed of positive and negative charges. Now, in order to dissolve sodium chloride, these ions must be separated from each other. So let's say the first step is to separate these ions. When they're separated by a significant distance, they're equivalent to being in the gas state. So we're still gonna have the same charges. They're simply separated from each other. Now, to separate these ions, to convert them from the solid state to the gaseous state, this process, is it endothermic or exothermic? What would you say? To break a bond, let's use hydrogen as an example, you need to separate the atoms from one another. And breaking a bond always requires energy. You've got to put energy into it to break this bond. So breaking a bond is always an endothermic process. The enthalpy change is positive. So the opposite is true. Whenever two atoms come together to form a bond, it's an exothermic process. So the enthalpy change is negative. So make sure you understand that. So let me summarize it in a different way. So if you have two atoms that are close together, it takes energy to pull them apart. So the separation of atoms is an endothermic process. You're breaking the bond. And when you have two atoms that are far apart from each other, whenever you bring them together, the enthalpy change is negative. Because as they approach each other, they will form a bond. So looking at our example up above, we're separating the ions. Separating any particle is an endothermic process. You're breaking the ionic bonds that hold them together. Now the second thing we need to do is separate water molecules from each other. In order for water to dissolve sodium chloride, the water molecules that are bonded together by hydrogen bonds, they have to separate from one another in order to hydrate or solvate the sodium chloride ions. So in order for some of the water molecules to interact with the sodium chloride ions, some of the hydrogen bonds have to break. We got to separate some water molecules from each other. And since we're separated molecules, since we're breaking hydrogen bonds, the enthalpy change for this process, let's call it delta H2, that is also positive. That's an endothermic process. Now the last step is for the separated water molecules to interact with the gaseous ions. So I'm going to draw that in the next page. So here we have a sodium ion, and on this side, a chloride ion. So when sodium is dissolved in water, that is the sodium cation, all of the oxygen atoms in water are going to point towards the sodium ions. That is the oxygen atoms that are close to the sodium ions. So each of these four water molecules are going to orient themselves like this. Oxygen has a partial negative charge and sodium has a positive charge. So we know opposites attract. So the oxygen part of water solvates the sodium cation. And so when this happens, notice that an ion dipole is created. Water is a polar molecule. So it has a dipole moment. And sodium is an ion. So when these two interact, they create an ion dipole interaction. So each of these bonds that are formed releases energy.
So for the third reaction, it's going to be an exothermic process. Because as we create those ion dipole bonds, energy is released. As we said before, whenever two particles approach each other to form a bond, it's an exothermic process. So a lot of energy is released when the sodium ions and the chloride ions are solvated by water. A lot of ion dipole interactions are created in this process. So delta H3 is highly exothermic. Now the enthalpy of the solution is the sum of delta H1, delta H2, and delta H3. Because if you add up those processes, the net result is that solid sodium chloride is dissolved into the aqueous state. In the first step, solid sodium chloride is separated into gaseous ions. So that's delta H1. Now notice that this reaction is the reverse of the lattice energy reaction. Lattice energy is the energy change that occurs when gaseous ions combine to form a solid product. So this is the enthalpy change that's associated with the lattice energy of a compound. Now lattice energy is always negative, it's exothermic because you have separated gaseous ions coming together to form a solid product. And whenever particles come together, they release energy, which means delta H1 has to be positive. It's the reverse of the enthalpy of lattice energy. So delta H1 is negative delta H Le. Same reaction, simply reversed. Now, it's important to understand that delta H2 and delta H3 combined represents the enthalpy of hydration. And so what happens here is that the gaseous sodium and chloride ions, they combine with water and turn into the aqueous state. So now they're solvated by water. So whenever you see the aqueous phase, that means that those ions are dissolved in water. So this is going to be the enthalpy of hydration, which represents delta H1 and delta H, I mean delta H2 and delta H3, not delta H1. So delta H1 is just the opposite of the lattice energy, and the enthalpy of hydration is delta H2 plus delta H3. Just want to make that correction. And now let's add these two reactions. So notice that the sodium ions cancel and the chloride ions cancel. So on the left side we have solid sodium chloride, which is here. And on the right side we have the sodium chloride ions, which is here. So if we add equations 1 and 2 to get equation 3, then based on Hess's law, the enthalpy change of equation 3 is the sum of the enthalpy changes of equations 1 and 2. So we could say that the enthalpy change of the solution is equal to delta H1, which is the same as the negative enthalpy change of the lattice energy, plus delta H2 and 3, which is the enthalpy change of hydration. That's when the separated ions come together to be solvated by water. And also, it includes some of the hydrogen bonds of water being broken in order to get separated water molecules to solvate these uh, sodium chloride ions. Not all of the hydrogen bonds uh, break, by the way, just some of them. So we can't really quantify how many or how much uh, hydrogen bonds break. So that's why we're including enthalpy 2 and 3 and call it the enthalpy of hydration.
So now that we have this equation, we can go ahead and calculate the enthalpy of the solution. We can answer this question. But before we do, it's important to understand that lattice energy is always exothermic. And so when you add the negative sign, this quantity will always be positive. Now the enthalpy of hydration is usually negative. So the relative magnitudes of these uh, values will determine if the enthalpy change of the solution is positive or negative. So if this quantity has a larger magnitude, the enthalpy change of the solution is going to be positive. If this one wins, then this is going to be negative. So let's work on this problem. So the enthalpy change for the lattice energy is negative 787. And for the enthalpy of hydration, it's negative 783. So delta H1 is positive 787. And the enthalpy of hydration, that's negative 783. So the enthalpy of solution is going to be positive 4 kilojoules per mole. So because this value was larger than this one, the enthalpy change for the entire solution is positive 4. So what does this mean? What can we understand from this value? So if we take one mole of solid sodium chloride and completely dissolve it in water, the temperature of the solution should decrease slightly. Not by much, but this is an endothermic process. So sodium chloride, as it dissolves in water, it takes away some of the ambient thermal energy from the surrounding water molecules. And so the temperature of the water molecules should drop because they're losing energy as this reaction pulls in energy to dissolve these ions. Now it turns out that there's a second way in which we can calculate the enthalpy of the solution. And that's using the enthalpy information found in the back of the, your chemistry textbook in the appendix section. So let's write the reaction. So solid sodium chloride is going to dissolve into ions. So it's going to go into the aqueous phase. And the energy that's associated with this reaction is the enthalpy of solution. So how can we use the data table to calculate the enthalpy of solution? Well, using heat's information, the enthalpy of the reaction which is the same as the enthalpy of solution, that's going to be equal to the sum of all of the enthalpy changes, the heat deformation of the products, minus the sum of all of the heat deformation of the reactants. So on the product side, we have two ions, the sodium ion and the chloride ion in the aqueous phase. And for the reactant side, the left side, all we have is solid sodium chloride. Let's put an equal sign here. So the enthalpy of formation for the sodium ion is negative 240. And for chloride, it's negative 167. Now for solid NaCl, it's negative 411. Negative 240 plus negative 167, that's equal to negative 407. And then negative times negative 411, that's positive 411. So negative 407 plus 411 is equal to positive 4 kilojoules per mole. So notice that we get the same answer. So this is the enthalpy of the solution. So that's how much energy is absorbed when one mole of sodium chloride dissolves in water. It absorbs 4 kilojoules of thermal energy from the surrounding water molecules. And whenever water loses thermal energy, the temperature goes down. So in summary, whenever you have an endothermic reaction occurring in water, the temperature of the water will go down. It should decrease. And whenever you have an exothermic reaction occurring in water, 
the temperature of the surrounding water molecules should go up. So to review, there's two ways mentioned in this video to calculate the enthalpy of the solution. The first is by adding the negative enthalpy change of the lattice energy and the enthalpy of hydration. The second is to use the heat information found in the appendix in the back of your textbook. So it's the enthalpy change, it's the sum of all of the enthalpy changes of the products, well technically the enthalpy information, minus the sum of all the enthalpy information of the reactants. Now there might be other ways, but those are two common ways to find the enthalpy of solution uh, if you want to. So if you want to find more videos on chemistry, physics, algebra, trig, check out my channel. I have different playlists organized with a lot of videos that could help you in your courses. So thanks again for watching this video and have a good day.